Ever since MediaTek announced the Dimensity 9000 based on TSMC's 4 nanometer fabrication process, I've been excited to test it out. And the excitement grew even more intense after I saw the solid performance of the Dimensity 8100 in our test. If you haven't watched that video yet, a link should pop up right now. You must go and check it out. So yeah, I tested the Dimensity 9000 against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is based on Samsung's ill-fated 4 nanometer fabrication process, which of course everybody knows that TSMC is kind of better. The specs are quite similar on both these chips, but MediaTek's Dimensity SoC actually has a slightly overclocked CPU and a Mali GPU instead of an Adreno one. Anyway, I did a detailed performance comparison with benchmarks and, you know, a detailed Genshin Impact gaming test with FPS data on the Dimensity 9000 running inside the Redmi K50 Pro. And I compared it against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 inside the iQ9 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro. You must be wondering why two Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones? Because we all are aware by now that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is tuned differently by different brands. So we had to get that parity in order. So yeah, without wasting any more time, if you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track Day English. Let's begin. Now, if you're here for the first time, we make a lot of detailed comparisons, tests, and reviews on our Tracking Tech English channel. And if you're buying a new phone, these videos are very, very useful for you guys. So hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. And YouTube's algorithm favors engagement. So hit the like button and comment below if you like the video and if you have something interesting to share as well. Oh, by the way, we have a new shorts channel called TTE Shorts. I'll add a link in the description below. You must go check it out. Tech under 60 seconds. So first things first, unfortunately, 3D Mark failed to run on the Redmi K50 Pro, one of the best tests for, you know, stressing out the GPU and we couldn't run it. And since I had very little time with the Redmi K50 Pro, I decided to save it and run Antitooth thrice instead back to back. And what's interesting to note in our Antitude tests is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 inside the iQ9 Pro had the best scores and the best final average as well. In fact, in the final run, it actually had a score that was higher than the first two runs. The Redmi K50 Pro came in second as the scores reveal and the OnePlus 10 Pro with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 throttles a lot. And this is despite all these phones running in performance mode for this benchmark test. However, despite that, the 8 Gen 1 inside the OnePlus 10 Pro and of course the iQ9 Pro as well actually had a higher GPU score in all the three runs compared to the Dimensity 9000 inside the Redmi K50 Pro. Now this just indicates that, you know, the Adreno GPU is more powerful than the Mali GPU inside, uh, you know, the Dimensity 9000. But these numbers don't necessarily mean that it will translate in real life performance as well because generally GPU or hardware has slightly more headroom and game developers don't actually push it to that extent. What really matters is that games run smooth on these phones without throttling too much and without these phones getting too hot. Anyway, more about that in our Genshin Impact real world gaming test. Now we ran Geekbench next and what's heartening to see is that for the very first time on an Android phone, in our tests, the score actually crossed the 4000 mark in the multi-core test with the Dimensity 9000 inside the Redmi K50 Pro. So yes, in multi-core performance, the Dimensity 9000 is better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. However, when it comes to single core performance, the performance is nearly identical on all the three phones. Now, since we don't have 3D Mark numbers, we actually ran CPU throttle also twice. And this time we went completely berserk. We actually had a 100 core 30 minute test once in balanced mode and once in performance mode running on all the three phones. The end stability scores were very, very interesting. Let's try to analyze it. In the balanced run of the CPU throttle test, we noticed that, you know, the Redmi K50 Pro had the best stability score compared to the iQ9 Pro and the OnePlus 10 Pro. But in the performance mode, the CPU was pushed further and you can see that you know it's running at top speed and uh, you know it starts throttling much much sooner and therefore the stability score is much lower on the redmi k50 pro now which actually has a dimensity 9000 oddly though the oneplus 10 pro stayed stable for much longer in the performance mode compared to the balance mode which was completely like something that put me off although what's more interesting to note is that the redmi k50 pro with dimensity 9000 actually lost the least amount of battery life 
and also didn't get as hot as the other two phones in this you know test and this actually indicates that the dimensity 9000 could be more power efficient and of course it could also have better thermal performance too now i am exercising caution here with words like might and could primarily because this is the very first time that we are running any of these tests on a phone with dimensity 9000 and the tuning could vary with different brands therefore we'll have to run these tests again for sure with other phones that come with dimensity 9000 just to authoritatively conclude stuff now going to the most important real world gaming test which is the genshin impact test that we generally do that game is really really powerful and can stress android phones although firstly i'd like to clarify that after an update genshin impact is actually running at the higher resolution on the redmi k50 pro as is the case with the snapdragon 801 phones as well now with that out of the way the numbers that we found here in real world were slightly different from what the benchmark results were and therefore it's very interesting to analyze this as well now firstly the dimensity 9000 offered the best average fps of over 50 fps and that's very very good compared to the snapdragon 8 gen 1 it's at the oneplus 10 pro and the ico 9 pro which actually scored much lower than what i expected to have fewer jangs and stutters in gen is actually very very good so yeah dimensity 9000 is very impressive when, when it comes to gaming performance in fact dimensity 8100 also was very impressive although i must mention that it is not as stable as the slightly less powerful dimensity 8100 however the redmi k50 pro with dimensity 9000 actually draws a lot more power which is about 6 watts compared to 3 watts uh, that you know the oneplus 10 pro draws and the 2.4 watts that you know the ico 9 pro draws which means that the oneplus 10 pro and the ico 9 pro could be throttling much sooner on genshin impact specifically which also indicates why the redmi k50 pro loses more battery life and rises higher when it comes to the temperature compared to the ico 9 pro and the oneplus 10 pro because it doesn't throttle as much although i must mention that the redmi k50 pro actually touched a peak of only about 43 degrees which is actually well under control uh, and you know it's good enough when it comes to uh, you know heating performance and if i get unbridled power and you know less throttling in return i'd actually take that rise in temperature so yeah after these tests what i notice is that unlike the dimensity 8100 the dimensity 9000 doesn't actually shock you with its you know performance but what the dimensity 9000 does is that it actually uh, it performs as well and sometimes even better than the snapdragon 8 gen 1 and it's a saner more efficient tuning with better cpu performance as well but yes it loses out in gpu to the snapdragon 8 gen 1 when it comes to absolute power that the gpu can achieve the adreno gpu can achieve on the snapdragon 8 gen 1 however i still feel that these are too early days like i mentioned before and we'll have to run on multiple phones to figure out how the dimensity 9000 performs because we have had a lot of snapdragon 8 gen 1 phones already to understand you know how it can be tamed and and how it is tamed by different brands regardless the initial numbers for dimensity 9000 inside the redmi k50 pro actually looks very very promising and could actually end the snapdragon juggernaut if everything goes well for media tech now i did read quite a few comments saying that what are the use of these benchmark numbers in real life where it can perform really well i kind of agree with that uh, general sentiment mostly but you know what it's fun to test you know socs and find out how different brands are providing performance so we go ahead and do that uh, for the sake of that numbers are actually very indicative of what kind of performance you can expect from these phones that you're spending a lot of money on now before i go though there was a very interesting perspective from gagan arora who who is ex cmo for iku india he actually said that if you are buying an expensive phone go for a snapdragon phone instead of a phone with dimensity chip and that is a very interesting take i did ask him as well and he had some interesting observations you guys should go check it out let me know what you uh, think of that perspective whether you agree with gagan do not agree with gagan let's have a civil discussion in the comment section below i actually had a lot of fun making this video and showing you guys what is possible on the upcoming dimensity 9000 phones i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did again hit that like button maybe even comment below until next time this is ashad signing off keep tracking and stay safe